Okay. Hello, anybody home? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, Casey, Jennifer. Okay, anybody else? <laughs> Olivia, Caitlin. Okay, well, uh, we have a test this week. Um, so I'm gonna review for the test. I've made some materials available on Moodle for this week. The essay questions and uh, a practice test. The practice test, I'll make the answers available tomorrow. Um, and I've also got uh, some slides that I was gonna go to. So it's a little early, so I'll just kind of wait, install. Um, let's see, I got new artwork here. There's Charlie, my son, he's, he's nine. He made a new coronavirus picture. He's kind of as banned as coronavirus. That's an old one, that's a, a chicken. Uh, this is, let's see, you can't see that. That's my uh, uh, anatomy stuff. And so I'm just kind of stalling here for a minute. Uh, let's see, is anyone else showing up? Recording, recording, well, okay. So I got a minute here and then I'll start. All right, so, um, so the test will be just a long quiz is I'm gonna use probably mostly questions that I've already asked you in the uh, um, in the weekly chapter quizzes but there will be an essay question that'll be worth somewhere around 20% of your grade um, so we'll, we'll have that uh, there'll be true false questions there'll be multiple choice questions only one essay I'm not going to do fill in the blank because Boodle's very poor about correcting them if if there's any kind of um, variation in spelling and so we'll just we'll just do that um, oh I should say if you have any question you can just blurt it out or you can chat it and I'll try and answer it um, so so um, and of course I'm gonna make the exam available Wednesday morning and I'll close Thursday night so that um, you'll have, uh, you only have one opportunity to do it. So you, once you log in, you've got to finish it. You'll have an hour, um, um, and, and, but you've got two days which to take it. So Wednesday or Thursday. There's also new materials on ecology for this week, but it's kind of short. And I, I think some of that's pretty easy to go through. Uh, so let me see if I can share a screen with you and we can go through um the review slides okay so that looks like that okay so let's see here is this gonna work can anybody see that anybody thumbs up okay a couple people see it so there's uh, you know albert einstein riding a bike you don't have to be a genius Okay, uh, there's three chapters here uh, for you to look at. Um, the, let's see, the first chapter is the uh, DNA technology, chapter 12. Then the introduction to evolution, how populations evolve, chapter 13. Then the evolution of animals and humans, chapter 17. So, so, you know, you've got a couple days, you can spend a chapter kind of, or a day reviewing each chapter. Okay, so again, active methods are most useful. So don't just page through it, take some notes, make review sheets, make flashcards, quiz with a partner. Um, and then of course, short 15 minute sections with breaks between them are good. Um, and so don't, don't plan like four hours. All right. So with the, uh, the DNA technology, the most important thing is recombinant. So we, we have, uh, we can take DNA uh, from a donor cell, okay? We, we separate DNA chemically, and then we cut it with an enzyme, okay? That, that's um, a restriction enzyme, okay? Then we have a, 
like a, a vector, like a plasmid or a virus vector, we cut it with the same enzyme and then we glue those pieces together with an, another enzyme, DNA ligase. So really basically two enzymes. So this has been going on for years. People have been doing this since the late 70s. We make things like insulin for treating diabetes, growth hormone for treating dwarfism, blood clotting proteins for treating hemophilia. We're able to engineer new crops like BT corn so we don't have to spray insecticides all over the place. The plant makes its own insecticide. Uh, we, can, we can make recombinant organisms that are capable of cleaning up toxic waste. So this has been very effective. Uh, it allows us to do interesting, neat things. Okay, so, so those, those are the applications. If you want, you know, in biology, nobody gets rich except, except the genetic engineering guys. They get rich. <laughs> and so, so uh, there's, there's a bunch of poor teachers and vaccine researchers and things like that. And then there's these rich biologists that are doing this. Because, you know, once you come up with a medicine that you can make with, uh, with genetic engineering, it's, it's just like growing E. coli in a lab and you, you get this stuff practically for free. Uh, so you can make hormones that you can use to treat sicknesses, you can make vaccines that are cheap, very effective. Um, and, and once you've developed your thing, it's, it's really great. It, it's very easy to produce. Okay, all right, and then in this chapter, there's a bunch of other techniques that are really kind of related to, uh, you could say, DNA profiling or DNA fingerprinting. And here again, we're using enzymes that we found in organisms. And so these enzymes are used to copy DNA. And so one of these reactions is the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. And here we use a heat-stable DNA polymerase from a, a hot springs bacteria and you heat up the DNA so the strands separate. You cool it down, that allows this enzyme to work. And then you do this, this uh, heating and cooling cycles and you get uh, as much DNA as you want. So there's, there's been cases where they find a cigarette butt at a crime and they find one skin cell on the cigarette butt and then they, they take the DNA out of there and amplify it and they catch crooks out of one single skin cell. Uh, it's amazing. Okay, we can also sequence DNA okay, by uh, using the same enzyme and these color, kind of color coded end things. And uh, these are the chain terminators that have a color code. And so you get all these different chain things that, that end in a specific color. Um, and so you separate them by size and you just read what color comes up and you've got the sequence. Uh, and so, and again, this is automated, polymerase chain reactions automated, uh, just fantastic. You can, you can sequence somebody's DNA from just a single cell again. So amazing. Um, and then we can use DNA probes to find specific types of bacteria or specific types of gene sequences. Um, and so you can, it can be a bacteria clone or it can be from a suspect. And so you can identify individual suspects. So huge analysis type breakthroughs. So this has really been useful in DNA profiling. Sometimes they'll call it DNA fingerprinting, but um, you can take very small samples and you can identify individuals. Uh, and there's a variety of techniques. So this has led to a huge, huge uh, kind of re-examination of our criminal justice system. Overturned lots of convictions um, and lots of new convictions. Lots of cold cases where, where somebody was, you know, killed 30 or 40 years ago that we're able, you know, if, if the sample is saved and uh, we're able to match it to, to someone who may have committed another crime. So this is been really just amazing. And I don't know if you've, you've checked this link on the Innocence Project, but it's really, it's amazing that, to see the things they've done. Um, I don't, you know, does anybody have any comment on this? Has anybody heard this before? Maybe. It's, it's okay to speak up. Um, I mean, this, this is, it's amazing. And it just, 
showed that we were making some mistakes in our criminal justice system. It's kind of like the revolution with um, uh, surveillance technology and, and cell phones. I mean, it allows you to do things you just couldn't do before. Uh, and, and so, um, you know, and, and I, I don't know if we have anybody here in criminal justice, but uh, things are so much safer now than they were when I was growing up. Um, and it's partly because of this, because you can find these people easier um, and they're unlikely to get away with repeating crimes over and over again. Um, you know, and so um, no matter what any, anybody tells you, crime is going down. And it's because they're much more likely to catch serious criminals. Uh, and so, so another huge advance, um, a, a big, big improvement. All right. So there's a little bit of ethical in, issue on this. Um, you know, who owns DNA? Um, you know, who, who gets the benefits? Uh, in many ways, we're all benefiting. We're, we're all benefiting. There are very few risks. You know, when, when they talk about genetic engineering in foods, uh, that's not going to change people. Uh, we're getting foods that have less pesticide residue and are cheaper. Um, and so that, that's a, there's huge benefits. Uh, the only really kind of issues I can think of is that, you know, insurers can find out what health problems you're likely to have and discriminate against you. Um, and then somebody says, I own this gene and the test, make the test expensive. But otherwise, this is just improving things. Okay, so then the, the next section was on evolution. And so there's, it's, it's a, it's an important section and this is a, a major theme in biology. Um, evolution is genetic change in a population, okay? And it occurs because some individuals leave more offspring, okay? And so over time, the offspring become better suited to the environment. Um, and so, um, you know, it's, it's one of the basic underlying concepts. There's um, some, you know, things to understand about natural selection. There's lots of variation. Individuals vary a lot. Um, and that not all individuals will contribute to the same to the next generation. Um, that some individuals are likely to leave more offspring. And this unequal success means that there's going to be changes in what genes are common, gene frequency changes. Okay, So these populations are going to change. Um, and some individuals are better at leaving offspring. Okay, and so this guy here that's been pumping steroids into his rear end uh, that causes his, his, uh, his less to be less likely to produce sperm, and he's probably off doing things that are less important than than raising kids. And so, in evolution, it's it's raising offspring is what matters. Um, is there any evidence for evolution? Yes. Okay. In science, what matters is evidence. And when you have multiple types of evidence all pointing in the same direction, that's really good. And there's no evidence that, that points against evolution. And so, um, so there, there are all these different kind of features of evidence that, that suggest evolution occurs. Um, artificial selection, fossil records, biogeography, which is the distribution of animals among islands and continents, comparative anatomy of animals and plants, comparative embryology, and then looking at the molecules, okay? And again, I wanna point out, agriculturalists were way ahead of us. Farmers knew, okay, animals vary, plants vary, I select the traits I want, and I only allow those to reproduce, and my crops will get better, my animals will get better, I can produce change. Um, and so, so that's a really good example. You know, all these breeds of dogs, those were produced in historic times and from selection, okay? And so if this works in domestic animals and plants, it should work also in natural populations, okay? And the fossil record is, is the record of that happening. The, uh, you know, we know fossils are old. We know that fossils have shown change over time. There are fossil species no longer living. Uh, the earliest fossils were simple and later fossils more closely resemble living species. We also know there's intermediates. 
Um, yeah, okay. So biogeography, this was the big evidence for Darwin and, and Wallace. They looked at different species on different islands and found that the species were different but similar in some respects, and that could be best explained by changing once they got to the island. And so this regional variation uh, was because regional features were different and organisms could change. And then uh, it was too much to assume that they're or that it was coincidence that animals had these similar features, that this had to be due to similarities in, in ancestors, that they just received the genes from a common ancestor. Okay, and then we, we see this in modern things when we look at molecular sequences of proteins and DNA. So there's lots and lots of evidence. Okay. Uh, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. I will not give you a Hardy-Weinberg problem, but I will ask you about why frequencies change. Uh, frequencies only stay the same if you have random mating, a large population, no migration, no selection, no mutation. So if, if any one of those is different, you get changes. Oh, whoops. Okay, we can see evidence of evolution in humans. Uh, humans uh, respond to their local environment. One really good example of this is in areas with malaria, a really serious disease that's impossible to avoid because it's transmitted by mosquitoes. Um, this serious disease causes people to evolve so that they, they become resistance. Genes that confer resistance to malaria are at a, a real premium. And so in areas where malaria has developed, humans develop resistance, okay? And so one of these genes is a sickle cell uh, allele, and that gene is common where the most severe forms of malaria are common in, in Africa. But there are other resistance genes that are found in other areas. Um, in, in Italy, there's a thalassemia gene, stuff like that. It's all due to resistance to malaria. Malaria was a really serious disease. If you travel, make sure you ask your doctor about anti-malarial drugs. Okay, so then uh, animals, one of the things that Darwin used was he used uh, a discussion of animal uh, uh, ancestry and animal features to support his ideas on evolution. And he talked about their anatomy and how they develop. And so uh, he was able to kind of reconstruct the evolution of these using the fossil record, using anatomy, and using uh, the study of early embryos. Okay. Uh, for us, the most important thing is that we can identify who is related to us. Okay. We are vertebrates, which are groups of chordates. We have early embryos that are very similar. Okay. They develop a hollow nerve tube along their back. They develop an internal skeleton, a notochord that's replaced by a vertebrae. They develop these pharyngeal pouches that become gills in fish, and in us, there are certain glands, and then a post-anal tail. Okay, for us, we can also identify that we're mammals. We have the primary features of mammals, hair, placenta, mammary glands, we're warm-blooded, we're primates, we have opposable thumbs, nails, fingernails, big eyes, big brains, and we're related to some uh, fossil intermediates that show our features. And then we have nice genetic evidence. Okay, so... Does anybody have any questions? You can type them or you can just blurt them out. What's the format of the test going to be? Um, well, it's it's gonna it's gonna be a long quiz. It'll show up and I'll it'll say exam, but it's it'll have the same kind of uh, icon as that the test you or that the quizzes have. It'll just be open for a longer period of time. Um, and it'll be longer, but it'll be same thing. Five questions on a sheet. You know, you'll you'll most of them will be multiple choice and fill in the blank. They'll just be one essay, which I'll go over in a minute here. It's a good okay. question. Um, so I I can't do the things that I normally do on paper with Moodle. Moodle doesn't allow me to give you as many choices. Um, I can't allow you to look at questions and say ah, I don't want that one. Um, it would be you know. Uh, maybe in the future. Okay. Anybody else?
did you record Thursday's meeting? I tried, <laughs> but I failed again. I'm recording right now. Um, and, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> so, um, yeah. what are we supposed to do for lab two? Uh, lab two, what was lab two? Uh, we had, uh, what did I do last week? Um, I didn't give you a lab last week because I was behind. So we had the, uh, the DNA stuff. So there is a quiz, but we had no new lab stuff last week. Um, uh, I'm going to try and get a lab together after the exam. So that, and that'll probably be one, one kind of late this week and one next week, and that'll be it. No lab exam. I just, eh, too much to do. Uh, did you mention how many questions are going to be on the exam? Um, there will be one essay question and probably around uh, 30 multiple choice fill in the blank type questions. So, and, I'll, and I'm hopefully in an hour you'll have to do that. Maybe a little longer. Anything else? Okay. All right. Okay, we've had some additional people join. That's good. Um, let's see if I can look at essay questions. Um, oh, I want to share here. Oh, am I going to share? Okay, hold on. Uh, there we go. Let's try this. Okay, so this is this is available on Moodle. It's just a Word document you can haul up, um, and so. That's, uh, can, well, I should ask first, can you see it? It says essay questions? Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, so there are only two here, you'll get one of these. Um, and so the one is, how has DNA profiling changed our criminal justice system? Explain the value of this type of evidence and compare it to earlier types of evidence used to identify suspects. Who does this help, prosecutors or defense attorneys? Um, okay, so DNA profiling. Um, so we can take from a very small biological sample, really one cell, whether it's a blood cell, uh, whether it's a, a cell from seminal or vaginal fluids, whether it's a skin cell or a hair cell, um, we, all we need is one cell. So a very, very small sample. And we can, we can take the DNA out and get as much as we want and we can sequence it and use it for DNA probes. And these are very specific. Um, they can basically um, get it down to just you and your identical twin, okay? Or if you have an identical triplet or quadruplet, it's so specific. Um, previous to that, we were using really crappy types of scientific evidence, hair analysis, a uh, bite mark analysis, they're just garbage. Um, even when people would leave large amounts of blood at the scene, there are only eight blood types, okay? Uh, that was considered some of the best evidence was blood types. Well, there's only eight, okay? Half of the people in the United States have one blood type, O positive, okay? Even the rarest blood type was held by about 1% of the people in the United States. So even if some a criminal left his blood and it was the rarest type, that meant something like 3.5 3 million people in the United States had that blood type. So just ridiculously poor evidence. Um, and so that's why we're seeing all these um, convictions overturned. But because it's so specific, often we can identify things like the Golden State Killer a bunch of cases 40 years old that they couldn't solve until they got the DNA evidence. Um, and then they were able to nail the guy. And once they got him, they knew, okay, this is the guy because we find all this other, other evidence in his house, because we can place him in the area. Um, and so, so really, really powerful evidence. Um, and so much better than earliest, earlier types of scientific evidence. Uh, fingerprints were, pretty good evidence um, when you get them, but there weren't a lot of fingerprints at a lot of crime scenes. Um, and so, so that this is really, really good evidence. Um, and who does it help? Prosecutors, sometimes defense attorneys, sometimes it, it helps justice. It, it makes things more accurate. Um, and one of the hard things is it's, it's 
it's showed us that a lot of times we made convictions on evidence that wasn't good. That uh, evidence that said previously we thought convicted somebody or, or indicated their guilt now is used to clear them. Um, and so um, it's, it's, it's not necessarily on the side of prosecutors or dissent defense. Maybe it's on the side of the truth. And so that's, that's really helpful. And so there's lots of those Project Innocence reports. Um, I don't mention it because I think sometimes it's hard to go through, but there's also um, uh, a website uh, called End the Backlog that, that deals with, with rape kits and how, how helpful this has been with, with rape kits and the need to do DNA testing on rape kits. And again, this is a really good example of being able to find criminals that used to be able to go on and compete, re, commit repeat crimes. Um, and, and that's, there's really a revolution in criminal justice. And so if anybody's here and uh, is a criminal justice major, things are much better. Um, I grew up in the 1970s um, and that was really an era of high crime. I had a friend that worked at a gas station and it was just off the expressway and they would get robbed every month, every month. Um, and so I remember when he got the job, he was excited because he was, he worked, he was going to work from like 11 a.m. To, to 7 or 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. And he was getting like three times minimum wage. But then by the end of the second month, he had been robbed twice. <laughs> and so, so, you know, gun to the head and all that, uh, that just never happens anymore because all these places have cameras. And so they catch these guys right away. And um, this is kind of like that, that, you know, if, if a guy leaves um, blood or semen at a, a crime scene, they're going to catch him and, and they'll find him. And even if they don't find him, they'll be able, based on the blood or semen evidence, they'll be able to say, this guy has dark hair. He has blue eyes. He's, um, you know, his background is Irish and Italian. They'll be able to say that just from the cells. Um, and, and, and so amazing, it's amazing what they can do. Um, so, so really good thing. Okay, uh, so that's the first question. Does people feel they could answer that? Give me a thumbs up. Yes, thumbs up, maybe. Okay, <laughs> all right, one person, okay. Okay, good. Um, all right, the second question, in science, the term theory has a very specific meaning. Explain what the term means to scientists and how an idea becomes a theory. Does evolution by natural selection meet these criteria? Briefly describe the evidence that supplies, supports this theory. Okay, so in science, the thing is, it's all about evidence. It's, it's looking for an idea that fits the evidence and predicts new evidence. Okay, and so um, uh, this you know, evolution by natural selection, there's a slide there that just lists the different types of evidence. And so you should be able to list three or different, three or four different types of evidence and maybe give an example of that. But something like artificial selection, being able to improve cattle, cows, so that they produce more milk, uh, being able to improve corn so that the ears are bigger and, and it's more drought resistant. Um, these are good examples of that species and, and populations are not fixed. They can change over time. Um, the idea of homology, that uh, structures in different animals appear similar because they have, are descended from a common ancestor. And we can actually identify the same genes in different organisms working at the same time. So, um, Evolution by natural selection has multiple types of evidence that all point in the same direction. These mul that having multiple types of evidence all pointing in the same direction means that it's really well supported. And so, so, so another yes, this is this is a, a nice theory, and a theory is is a, a, a well supported idea, and so evolution qualifies as a theory. Does anyone have a uh, uh, feel good about that, that you could answer that question? Maybe. <laughs> Do 
No. <laughs> okay. So, so there's only going to be two questions. You'll either get one or the other. Uh, there's not going to be three. So you'll have to, you, you, you may get that question. So um, perhaps you would want to uh, ask a question about that question. <laughs> Okay, I don't even, okay. Uh, all right. So, so you could you do, use that slide that says, uh, let, let, me, let me go back and share that. Okay, so here. Okay, so if you're gonna answer the question on evolution, this is where you wanna, whoops, uh, okay. Let's go back, boom, 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 boom. Okay, you'd want to be able to list three or four types of evidence there, being able to say, you know, here's an example of this, a fossil intermediate like Archaeopteryx. It has feathers, clearly it can fly, but it's got a lot of reptile features like a bony tail, teeth in the jaw, it has separate fingers, um, features found in no living bird, but feathers are found in no reptile. So it's a, it's a transitional form. Um, the comparative anatomy, like the pattern of limb bones in the limbs of all vertebrates are similar. Um, and these forms in a similar way in the embryo. These are strong evidence of evolution. Okay. All right. Anybody have any questions? Type them out. How about give me a thumbs up if you think you could answer the evolution question if you had to. There's one person, two people, three, okay. All right, so I feel better. <laughs> All right, so there is, um, there is a, um, a practice exam. I will post the answers to that tomorrow morning, okay? So you'll be able to see that. Look at it tonight, see if you can do it. Uh, it has some sample questions. It's similar to the practice exams that I've given you before. You could, should look over your old quizzes because I'll use some of those. And so if you've got an old quiz uh, from, or the chapter quiz that you've got a 10 on, look that over, some of those questions will show up again, okay? So I would, I would study in those ways. Go through the chapters, go through the chapter summaries. Those are good ways to do that. Okay, I will have more materials to put on the, uh, the box for this week, including a lab. That won't get there till after Thursday, though. There'll be another lecture that'll probably show up tomorrow. All right, any final questions? Casey, I don't have my lab manual with me, so I, I don't know if exercise 13 is the next one. I'll have to look. I'll, I'll try and send an email about it. Okay. All right, study hard. Um, make sure you take the exam. Uh, send me an email if you have a question. I'll try and be better about emails this week. Last week I had some extra stuff to do, so I wound up behind. I had a meeting, a downstate meeting. Okay, I'm going to end the meeting unless someone has a, a, a question. Thank you for coming. Uh, Again, send me an email if you have any more questions. All right, thank you.